Hello, New Life Church, friends and family. It's good to see you. It's good to be with you. Today is a unique day, a special day in the life of uh, a life of our church and of the church and the Christian church. Is today is Ash Wednesday. We launch into Lent. We launch into a season in the life of the church that prepares our hearts for Easter. Just like Advent uh, is the time and season that leads up to Christmas, it's that time of preparation, right? There's so much uh, uh, shopping and and music and lights and and presents and all the stuff that go into into Christmas. So much stuff, watching Christmas shows and all that. That it's easy sometimes to lose sight of the real meaning of Christmas, right? And Advent is that season and that time that prepares your heart, prepares your mind for Christmas to remind us of the love and the hope and the joy and peace that is found in the coming of Christ as a newborn child. And so that that preparation is so crucial for us, as, especially as believers and as the church, to remember uh, who Christ is and, and, and really ultimately to prepare our hearts right? And, and Lent is that season that is that preparation time for us leading up to uh, Easter. And so today being Ash Wednesday, it's a really a season. It's, it's a time I was doing, uh, reading a variety of different things on this. And, and one writer wrote, it's to observe Holy Lent by self-examination, repentance, prayer, fasting, self-denial, reading, meditating on God's holy word to, to, to really prepare our hearts for the celebration of the resurrection. And I'm convinced that Easter Sunday will be that much more of a celebration, that much more of, of a time of rejoicing if we spend time in preparation for it. And so all things leading up to Easter, we kind of haven't fully got into the core of the of the preparation for Easter, but all the marketing of chocolate and Easter bunnies and Easter eggs and all that stuff that's fun and, and it's good stuff, but, but all that can end up being a distraction for us and we forget what Easter ultimately is about. And I, I love this text out of Philippians chapter two that just says this. It says, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take the interests of others too. You must have, listen, this is the critical verse in in this whole chapter. You must have the same attitude that Jesus had. Same attitude. Though he was God, he did not think of equality of God uh, with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death. On a cross. I'll stop right there. But at that reminder force in verse five of chapter two, right? You and I should have the same attitude as Jesus did. Wow. That's powerful for me because I think, man, do I have that attitude of Christ? Do I have the attitude to, to always put others first, to always humble myself, whatever? And I just, I fall short. And so Lent is that season that that is kind of a training time, a a surrendering time, a sacrificial time for us to prepare our hearts for Easter, to celebrate his resurrection, right? To celebrate that he is alive and alive indeed. But in our preparation, we learn the attitude of Christ that led him to the cross. So I have a few tools for us. I hope you received an email from me yesterday or uh, the 16th of uh, February. I hope you so check your email box. If you didn't receive one, let me know and I'll send this information to you because I just, I have a couple of tools that I want us to to hold on to and they're simple, they're easy things, but but I just, I want to encourage us of things that just what you can do to be prepared and prepare in your heart to have the attitude of Christ. So quickly, I want to go through this so we can be make most of our time. Number one, four things. Number one is do a daily reading. If you don't have the U version 
app, Y-O-U, U version app. It's a Bible app for your phone, right? If for either Android or iOS, right? Whatever phone you have, you can download this app and there are reading plans that go along with that. And I just want to encourage us to, to together do the reading plan, experiencing Jesus together through Lent. Experience, experiencing Jesus together through Lent. Now, I put the link to that in the email that I sent you. So you just have to click that. And if you don't have that app, I also put the link for you to click the link and be able to show you how to get that app for your phone. Okay, so so let's join together and do this reading plan, right? Daily, it's 40 days. So from now until Easter Sunday is 40 days. <clears throat> And so, and so as we prepare for Easter, a daily reading plan, I did it this morning already, and it, it didn't take me very long at all, less than 10 minutes, right? Just, it was short, but you put as much time as you want in. You can meditate, you can think on it, or if you got to read through it quick on that day, then you can do it fairly quickly because they're really short, but it really gives you that time and just meditating on God's word on thinking about how do I have the same attitude as Christ? And it kind of leads us through. So that's number one is let's do a daily reading plan together. Number two is I I want to challenge you to give up something for Lent, right? So it's fasting, fast something, right? Give up something that keeps you, give up something, this is important, give up something that keeps you from drawing close to God, right? That maybe becomes like, it's something that, that maybe is more important than your relationship with God. So give up something that, that you can, maybe it's social media, maybe it's a uh, of video games. Maybe it's a meal uh, once a week or once a day, whatever the case is, whatever it is, use it daily as a daily reminder that you, what you really need is Christ more than anything, right? And so let that be a reminder. So give up something. So daily reading, give up something. And then thirdly is give to something. So give up and give to. Give to means maybe your time, your resources, your finances. So we're going to be doing a sermon series starting this Sunday and through the Lenten season called Bless. And we're going to be talking about how to bless others and why is that important for us and what in practical ways for us as a church and for us personally. And so with that, I want to encourage us, would you be willing to give to something. Maybe give to someone. Give of your time. Give of your sacrifice. It doesn't always have to be monetary, uh, but also it could be, right? So in our tithes and offering, this could be a great season for some of you to say, you know, I need to step into that step of obedience and start giving tithe and, and give to the Lord. And so, <clears throat> but that's it. So number one, daily reading. Two, give up. Number three, give two. And then lastly, the fourth thing, lastly, is just simply pray. Just pray. And I want to encourage you with this. What one of the things that, that I do, and I've done this for years, is I do something called the 10, the 10 2 prayer, right? So it's at 10 02 every day, every morning. My, I have my alarm set on my on my watch, and it goes off every morning at 10 02. And I pray for lost people. I pray for God to help us reach people in our community, to help to have God help us to be sent out. And you say, what, why 10 to, what's that? That is based off the scripture of Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 10, verses two, verse two, which talks about that, that call on the Lord of the harvest, right? Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And it's as true today as it was when he wrote it and talked about it years and years ago, right? The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So Lord, send out workers into the harvest field to collect the harvest. Lord, we want to see the harvest be brought in. We want to see people to come to Christ. And so <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to pray. And one good thing you can do is just a habit is every day at 1002, watch, phone, whatever alarm you can use, let it go off and 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 set that. And then every day, Lord, I want to pray for my family. I want to pray for our neighbors. I want to pray for our church. I want to pray for the kingdom to continue to grow, right? Let's join in that journey together and let it be a daily reminder of the heart of God because that, my friends, is having the same attitude as, as Jesus did, right? As we are thinking about him throughout the day, every day in preparation for Easter. So when that day of Easter comes, boy, our hearts will be so full, ready to receive him, ready to celebrate because we've been working hard to sacrifice and surrender and give up our life in a, in a way that says, just as Christ journeyed to the cross, we're gonna journey together with him that leads to his death, but ultimately 
to his resurrection. Amen. Well, hey, listen, God bless you. I hope it's a wonderful day on this Ash Wednesday as we enter into this Lenten season. I hope it's a great day. I hope you take these these challenges seriously. Again, if you didn't receive that email, let me know. I'd be happy to send it out to you and, uh, and we'll get going on this together. God bless you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.